in the city since the mid 1970s and everywhere it occurs to me that everywhere you go poetry is one subject one genre that is always surrounded by negativity by limitations because they'll tell you poetry nobody reads poetry they'll tell you you write poetry but poets are crazy and of course they'll tell you poetry nobody publishes it why do you write poetry nobody is going to you know nobody is going to publish you so forget it i know a lot of poets in fact who've given up poetry to write fiction because that's what sells but i'll tell you one thing as i said earlier poetry will always find its audience because poets are a very determined bunch in the 50s as jerson may recall nisim azikal used to cyclo style his poems to get them out there in the absence of publishers in the 70s we had poets like adil jassawala geef patel arvind krishna mehrotra arun kolatkar getting together and saying okay no one's going to publish us we we'll publish ourselves and that's how clearing house was born these are collectors items if you have these beautiful books uh, i'll tell you the names of so i don't know if they'll be available in this library where did kaushik disappear uh, okay so i hope david sasoon has i hope david sasoon has these books because they are truly worth having in your library um i'll tell you it's um, nine enclosures by arvind krishna mehrotra missing person by adil jassawala jijuri by arun kolatkar it won the commonwealth prize and how do you withstand body by gee patel who was also a doctor by profession and following this example later in the 80s we had a younger set of poets called you know they called themselves new ground santan rodrigues melanie silgado raul de gama rose they brought out a collection called three poets and Adil Jassawala wrote a forward to that book and he said we've all heard that publishers you know that they don't publish poetry because it doesn't sell but you know we've heard it before we are not impressed and somehow through all these years poetry has found ways to reach out i unfortunately had grown up listening to this that nobody's interested in poetry thank god i did not allow myself to be limited by my own skepticism because in 1980 what year was it 1986 a friend of mine came to me nitin mukadam he was my professor at jai hind and uh, he said is there an audience for poetry and i said i don't think so and he said but can we find one and um, i said yeah of course we can So we sat at Parisian cafe at Fountain. It subsequently became a big in a bank, but the poetry group that we started continued for 20 years. It was the Poetry Circle, and it brought together some of today's best-known poets as college students. If I had allowed myself to be limited, or if Nitin had allowed himself to be limited by my skepticism, perhaps Poetry Circle would never have been born. and for me personally poetry has always been a way of getting over one's emotional limitations physical limitations because poetry is always cathartic it was always something that i could turn to when nothing else seemed to work in my life and i was about 16 when i wrote uh, the poems in my first book i want to read two of those because they do they do talk about the lim- the sense of limitation that i felt i had to overcome um you know it's okay i'll manage it. thanks no it's it's okay no problem thank you so when you're 16 nothing makes sense you think everyone else is better than you you feel that uh, you're not going to make it you're not going to survive you know you because there's so much that you have to learn and and no one to show you how to navigate that that thicket and i wrote this poem crystal 
for all its glitter diamond is only carbon never mind differences in price quality prestige carbon they said was black ugly so they changed the refractive index used it as lead to shoot graphitic holes in paper mass then realized it could be polished to still greater purposes and made what we call a diamond the softness gradually became hard today only another diamond can cut me thank you and the second poem i want to read today is a poem again around the same time i was about 16 and i was very ill i was physically very ill missing a lot of school and uh, i i didn't know how i was going to make it to the icse exam because i was you know more out of school than in and um, i in fact doctors thought i'd may never be able to walk again i have, the moment i heard that i jumped out of bed of course because at 16 it's 15 it's not an option to be a cripple for life so hinges I found my body hinged like any other door. It could open and close with just a push. It had been pushed too often. One hinge was insecure, but the other firm as iron. No tool seemed to work when I tried unhinging myself, and carpenters charged exorbitant rates. So I decided to leave it where it was. Now I'm building another body for myself. Thank you. Uh but I'm not done with what I want to say. Is there time for me to continue? Okay, thank you Amul. No, no, I think it's okay. I just switch it off please. I know. <laughs> I don't need it. Okay, one second. Uh Okay. <laughs> Okay so what I did want to say is that your generation is very very fortunate because today you have spaces for poetry that we never had you have cafes where poetry readings are hosted you have your phone with evernote and voice recorder when i was writing poetry as a youngster i wrote on the backs of bus tickets I sometimes wrote on the palm of my hand and then didn't wash my hand desperately for hours on end after that so I wouldn't lose those lines and uh I also find that you know it helps you write anywhere and everywhere I have written a poem called nine lives in my third book safe house I was in the ICU I had tubes going down one hand and i had my phone in the other hand somehow i was allowed to bring the phone in i sneaked it in and i wrote that poem about almost dying but not, you know still making it and while all this is fantastic it's very good that you have all these spaces and you have all these new audiences through the internet for example and you don't need to worry about finding a publisher because you've got your readers through groups like you know indian poetry has several thousand members you know 6000 i think or, or more much more than any poetry book in print would ever get but there is something that we need to be careful about here because what happens is that when you write and send it out there without allowing it to mature that poem is going to haunt you for the rest of your life once something is out there you will never be able to escape it i've had critics asking me i've had interviewers asking me 30 years later but why did you write that particular line now i would love to change that but i can't it's there it's there in my book i can't help it so i just like to you know a word of caution when you are sending your poems out there just be careful allow your poems to get their space allow them to breathe and when you feel they are ready they're not going to go anywhere i have had poems sitting with me for 8 years 10 years before i've allowed them to go into print and the other thing is that uh, 
you know when we are writing poetry we don't think about what is you know the small things the grammar the commas the full stops and i remember when i was about 16 and nisim azikul used to talk to me about my poems and i'm thinking wow you know i've written this amazing poem such a profound poem you know true love i've been through something that nobody's ever been through before and i'm showing it to him and i'm so excited and he just looks at it and says oh it's okay it's all right you missed a comma there I'd get mad I would fight with him about this and he said you know Minka the thing is that when you are young that is when you internalize the art and craft of writing poetry that's you know once it is a part of you and you don't need to think about it that's when your poems will really lift off that's when you know that you will survive Today I'm really happy to know that there are so many there's a new movement of spoken word poetry we're going to hear some of that today but also remember that your poems need to survive withstand the printed page the printed page is the cruelest thing because it will throw back your mistakes in ways that you you wouldn't expect and finally before I um, sign off I just want to If there is time is there time for me to read one poem not by me but by Siegfried Sassoon I don't think any relation David Sassoon but uh, I get writer's block quite a bit I still get it after 30 40 years of writing 35 years of my first book being out in print I still feel I can never write another poem So here's a poem by Siegfried Sassoon called limitations and here is where i will need my light <laughs> thank you <laughs> if you could crowd them into 40 lines yes you can do it once you get a start all that you want is waiting in your head for long ago you've learned it off by heart begin your mind's the room where you have slept Don't pause for rhymes till twilight woke you early the window stands wide open as it stood when tree tops loomed enchanted for a child hearing the dawn's first thrushes through the wood warbling you know the words serene and wild you've said it all before you dreamed of death a dim apollo in the bird voiced breeze that drifts across the morning veiled with showers while golden weather shines among dark trees you've got your limitations let them sing and all your life will waken with a cry why should you halt when raptures on the wing and you've no limit but the cloud flecked sky but some chap shouts here stop it that's been done as god might hallo her to the rising sun and then relent because the glorying rays remind him of green glinting eden days and adam's trustful eyes as he looks up from carving eagles on his beech wood cup young adam knew his job he could condense life to an eagle from the unknown immense go on whoever you are your lines can be a whisper in the music from the wires of song that plunge and tumble towards the sea that is the uncharted mercy of our tears i told you it was easy words are fools who follow blindly once they get a lead but thoughts are kingfishers that haunt the pools of quiet seldom seen and all you need is just that flash of joy above your dream so when those 40 platitudes are done you'll hear a bird note calling from the stream that wandered through your childhood and the sun will strike the old flaming wonder from the waters and there'll be 40 lines not yet begun so good luck to all of you young poets remember there's a new generation that will be looking up to you a few years down the line set them a good example and write fabulous poetry and never ever be afraid that you'll not be heard 
because even if you get that one person who listens to you and responds to your work that's enough thank you